Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, December 9th, 2020, uh, 2019 uh, meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, we're going to start this evening uh, with the administration of oaths by Town Clerk Deborah Lane for our uh, recently re-elected and newly elected town councilors and school board members. So could councilors Jordan and Jordan and school board members Carr and Saucier please come forward. Thank you very much, and congratulations again to um, the elected officials. Um, next, we're going to do the roll call. Valerie Adams? Here. Valerie Devereaux? Here. Jeremy Gabrielson? Here. Jamie Garvin? Here. Caitlin Jordan? Here. Penelope Jordan? Here. And Christopher Straw? Here. Would you all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business for tonight is item number 1-2020, uh, the election of the town council chairman. Is there anybody present from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, uh, we recently held our organizing caucus in November and the caucus unanimously recommended Valerie A. Adams uh, to be chairman. I'm looking for a motion at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll second Anyone will do. <laughs> I nominate Valerie Adams to be chair of the town council. Second. Motion by Councilor Jordan, seconded by Councilor Straw. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's unanimous. Congratulations, Chair Adams. Thank you. And on behalf of the council, thank you, Jamie, for serving as chairman for the past year. I very much enjoyed your um, style of leading the meetings, and I think it was very efficient. And the last year was definitely less chaotic than my first year on the council, but I think you handled everything with aplomb. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. Okay. So moving on, the next item on the agenda, um, town council reports and correspondence. Um, 
Do we usually start with the, the dashboard or other reports first? Either yes. either or? Do we want to do our core? I'll, I'll do the correspondence first. Any correspondence or reports from the council? You go first. I'll go first. Um, first, I want to um, report that there's a website, and I've talked to um, our town town manager, Matt Sturgis, about this. It's called MainUnclaimedProperty.gov. And it's um, a place to go if you live in the state of Maine to look for unclaimed property. It could be checks, something that um, should have come to you, but it somehow ended up in Augusta in the unclaimed pile that will go back to the state of Maine if you don't um, contact them and claim it. So uh, we're going to put a link on our website so that you can go directly to it and look for that unclaimed property. If um, you'd like to check it out before we do that, it's um, again, mainunclaimedproperty.gov. So I wanted to let everybody know about that. Uh, also on Friday, Councillor Garvin and I attended the um, naturalization ceremony here for the state of Maine. Uh, we had um, 45 people from 20 different countries that became US citizens. It was held here at um, Cape Elizabeth High School. And I know that um, for me it was very, very moving. It was an amazing experience and it was wonderful that it was hosted here um, at the high school. I'm sure um, Councillor Garvin's going to tell you how he felt about that too. It was just incredible. So thank you everyone for um, putting that together. Jeff Shedd, uh, Ted Jordan, people um, from the state of Maine. It was um, really beautiful. Thank you. Um, Councilor Jordan? Yes. Um, first, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, went to the polls and voted, and I was honored to be uh, elected again uh, to serve on the town council. So um, thank you very, very much. Um, secondly, I'd like to uh, let people know who are um, interested in the short-term rental um, ordinance work that we're doing that the next meeting is on January 6th, and I really encourage people to attend and, uh, and participate because this is an important ordinance that we're working on um, for the town. Um, and thirdly, I'd like to say, Valerie, I'm really excited about you serving as chair. I think it's great having representation from young uh, women who can demonstrate to everybody what is possible. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, and just to add to uh, Councillor Jordan's comment about the short-term rental meetings, I would encourage other council members to attend these meetings because um, it is a big issue and lots of moving pieces and it would be probably more efficient for the council if we go to those ordinance meetings rather than addressing it for the first time here um, as, as a council. Um, any other reports, correspondence? Yes, Jamie, uh, Councillor Garvin. Thank you. I have two things, um, but I will <coughs> echo um, Councillor Devereaux's comments. That was a, a really um, inspiring event on Friday and uh, a really a pleasure to be a part of. Um, the two things I wanted to bring up, uh, the first is to make everybody aware um, that the uh, Eco Maine Eco Excellence Awards are open for nomination. Um, last year we had a winner um, from Maine, a business here uh, outside in Maine, um, but we've had many other winners before, our recycling committee, uh, I think there's been some teachers in the school that have won, but um, the award is for either individuals, organizations, or businesses in all of the communities that EcoMaine serves, and we are an owner member community of EcoMaine. Um, so if you go to the ecomain.org website, again, ecomain.org, um, anytime between now and the end of January, so Friday, January 31st, you can fill out a very brief nomination form if there's somebody who who is uh, excellent in their uh, sustainability and waste management practices that you wanted to see recognized. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I actually have had a, more than a handful of people um, 
uh, come up to me asking, uh, why is the bottle shed going away? <laughs> and I think um, some confusion was uh, inadvertently caused by an article that was in the forecaster last week, I think that got also picked up in the Press Herald. Um, we have a workshop on Wednesday uh, here at Town Hall uh, at seven o'clock uh, discussing the um, uh, uh, committee that up until this point for the last several years has been sort of an ad hoc committee, but I think um, there's agreement on the council's part to, to formalize that and bring it under the regular appointments process, but in no way is there um, uh, any plan or any discussion at this point about doing away with the bottle shed uh, at all. So um, if there was miscommunication or misunderstanding about that fact, I just wanted to, to clarify that for folks. So that's all I had. Thanks. Thank you. Um, anyone else with reports or correspondence? We will move on to the Finance Committee report. Um, Councilor Straw. Thank you. Uh, so you should all have in your packets the appropriation control, the expense distribution, the revenue control, and the revenue distribution, um, along with the dashboard. Uh, the one uh, thing I wanted to highlight this month uh, relates to the Portland Headlight gift shop sales. So you'll see all the, uh, we are running behind where we were last year, um, but that, from my perspective, is uh, really due to just kind of variances in the, the uh, tourism that we saw this season. We're nevertheless, um, already we're at 80, uh, approaching 88% of the yearly budget. And again, that's not a calendar year, that's for uh, our fiscal year, which is through the middle of next summer. So uh, we, we appear to be well on track to uh, meeting our budgeted number. So just wanted to flag that. Um, beyond that, is there anything anyone had any questions about in the packets? Oops, seeing no one, I uh, turn it back to the chair. Thank you. Um, okay. We now have an opportunity for anyone present to raise an item not on the agenda this evening. Is anyone um, interested in discussing something not on the agenda? No. Um, seeing no one, we will move on to the town manager's monthly report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to begin my town manager's report this evening by extending my holiday wishes to the good people of Cape Elizabeth and here's hoping that the upcoming season brings health and happiness to you all. Uh, within that same, uh, same vein, there will be a holiday tree lighting event Friday evening, December 13th at the Thomas Memorial Library from 6 to 7 p.m. and the event is sponsored by the Cape Courier. So they're trying to establish a new tradition and uh, I, I volunteered to, to help be part of the sponsorship on the town's behalf as well. But, uh, and we have secured a, a, an outlet outside so they can illuminate the tree as well. So uh, there will be a, a lit tree <laughs> for, so for Friday night. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, as stated last month, I'm happy to bring an, uh, an end of the season report on the pay and display program at Fort Williams. The first four months were very successful, ending in approximately $65,100 over the forecasted gross receipts and $40,400 over the forecast net receipts. The estimated gross revenue for the season was forecast to be $345,100, while the actual was $410,200. The net was forecast at $236,300, while the actual net revenue that came in was $276,200. Operating expenses were slightly over forecast by 1%. This is due primarily to the startup costs that we encountered at the, and, by, and the increasing the number of terminals over the original amount forecast. This is anticipated to stabilize as the program continues next spring and conform to the forecasted expense amounts. The forecast expenses were 58,000 while the actual was 65,900. Now, this resulted in a net expense ratio of 16%, which is less than the 17% that we had originally uh, forecast. Now, the reason why it's less than that is because of the forecast of the gross revenues in relationship to the expenses that we had. So we're actually tracking under uh, percentage-wise, uh, and I think that will stabilize as the year goes by. Now, the volume of transactions were interesting. They tracked as were anticipated in the study performed by the special subcommittee in advance of the implementation of the program. There were a total of 92,955 transactions at the terminals. That's a good start. <laughs> of all the transactions, the two-hour purchase was 89% of the volume at 82,920 transactions and 81% of the gross revenues. 
the three hour pass was the second most popular option and that was at 7% of the volume with 6,533 transactions. The remaining 4% of the transactions were divided between the four and five hour passes and the season pass and there were 1,420 season passes purchased which is at one, one and a half percent of all the transactions, we found that that's a strong indication of what uh, the option that was being taken by the surrounding communities uh, who wanted to be a multiple user of the, of, the, of the park. With two months remaining in the first year program, and that would be May and June of, of, of 2020, it is strongly anticipated that the town will meet and exceed the anticipated revenue for fiscal year 2020. So uh, I'd say we started off with a good, successful, successful launch, and we are looking forward to the second half or the second part of the fiscal year. But I'm happy to answer any questions. I know I threw a lot of numbers out there. Uh, we'll have this posted with my manager's report, and I also have a handy chart that will make it much, you know, it'll make a lot more sense when you get a chance to see that. But it definitely was a good, good start. And if you think about roughly two and a half people per car on the two hour. We're probably looking at about four, four to five hundred thousand people total that came through the park, just from the from the pay and display terminal side of it, plus the uh, plus the plus the tour bus people. So it was a busy year, and uh, that's my manager's report, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for Matt Penny, uh, do. Councilor Gordon? Do you um, do you think that because there was some speculation that the uh, pay and display might. Uh, have an impact on the um, the gift shop. Do you think there's any relationship there to because people are some people may be driving through versus parking for. Yeah. I don't, I don't. That's not been the, the staff's indication. Okay, uh, good. I think uh, we're, we're still booking uh, sales from from the end of the year. Uh, sometimes as part of that transaction, we did uh, bump it a bit robustly uh, as far as where we were last year at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think we'll still hit we'll still hit our target. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely exceed it. But uh, they had some months that were busy, uh, mm -hmm. busier than others. But I don't think it had a relationship to that. As oftentimes it was the it's the bus traffic that does a lot of our okay. that drives a lot of our sales at the gift shop. Okay. Great, thank you. Yes, Councilor Garvin. Um, yeah, I was gonna make that point about the buses because it seemed like the bigger impact was the relocation of the bus drop-off area, but um, back on the parking, did um, has the vendor provided any information about um, the number of um, uh, 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 people that haven't paid and that they've had to go after or oh, anything like that? Uh, <laughs> we, we didn't issue any tickets this year. Really? Uh, we found that there was really high percentage as far as people compliance. participating. Yeah, the compliance was excellent. Wow. Uh, but we didn't issue any this year. We kind of took it as a soft, soft launching point. Um, it was more important to come out successfully, but they, we didn't find that there was a lot of, I guess you could say, uh, scoff flies mm -hmm. and on pay. But yeah, participation was great. And that was a point of what I did on my, uh, you know, I was down there probably four out of five days a week during the summer just looking at cars and found that if they didn't have a sticker, they usually had a, had a ticket in the front, uh, you know, that they'd paid. So, uh, but we took a soft approach year over this past summer. It seemed to work out pretty well. Next year, we'll slowly ease into that, but figured that was gonna be the safest approach. And I haven't heard anything, um, I assume that you haven't either about concerns from it, the other one of the other things that we had talked about was concerns of um, the immediately abutting neighborhoods and potentially people parking outside of the park and walking in. And I, I mean, I live close to there, and I haven't heard anything. Yeah, not anything. not a call. Yeah. yeah, never had. We didn't feel any impact. And I think the um, having the free parking to the rear was subscribed, uh, but it wasn't oversubscribed. So I think that was a big part of it. We weren't getting a lot of overflow into the surrounding neighborhoods uh, as a result of that. So it's been. Yeah, it was it was a good start, and, and we have, you know, we have done some debriefing with staff to see how, how successful it was this past year, and uh, you know, Chris Cutter's here this evening as well. He's our park coordinator. Uh, we've got some ideas for next year, and Chris has some great ideas that we're going to try to implement to try to improve the experience as well, and uh, try to improve on what we've already started. So, um, and very optimistic. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Yes, Councilor Devereaux. 
Um, I was just wondering if you knew if the vendor has taken care of the uh, machine so that they can accept um, foreign credit cards, because I heard that that was a problem. We had people from other countries that were trying to use it, but it wouldn't hmm. accept their credit cards. Do you know if that's been taken care of? Ne I nev never heard it. Um, but it's, but I'm happy to take it up with them. I think if, if we can find a way to find solutions to all that, uh, we can. Uh, yeah. The only other area that I had was one person who wasn't comfortable with using their credit card uh, at all because uh, they were afraid they were going to get, you know, uh, skimmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, you know, there's ample parking to the rear for free, and that seemed to solve the the problem there. So um, I said, if you're concerned, you can park back there. And she found that acceptable for her as well. Um, I have a question, actually. Um, I don't drive to the park all that often, so I haven't, I didn't see the evolution of this over the summer, but I did drive in once last summer, and I noticed some people seem to be confused about when you have to pay and when you don't have to pay. Um, has that been posted in the park? We had it on the on the units, but I think that was what, that was one of the areas we did discuss in our debrief that we need to have that more <coughs> identified. That you know the hours of when you should pay versus when you shouldn't. Uh, we do want to get that more clearly displayed. That was one of the, one of our takeaways this summer as well. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions for Matt, thank you for Thanks. all that information. <laughs> um, we'll move on to review the draft minute, minutes, and we have um, two draft minutes to review the special meeting and the regular meeting. Special meeting held November 6, 2019. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting November 6, 2019? So moved. Councillor Jordan, second? So. Councillor Devereaux? Um, all in favor? Or Sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Um, and uh, do I have a motion to approve the regular minutes from the meeting um, held November 13, 2019? Councillor Garvin? Second. Councillor Jordan. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, moving on to the results of the caucus held November 14th, 2019. Item number 2-2020, adoption of the town council rules. Um, is there any public comment on this item? No, seeing none. Um, do we, what is the appropriate action here? Motion to, motion to accept the council. To rules. adopt the rules? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion to adopt the town council rules? So moved. Councilor Garvin? Second? Second. Councilor Jordan? Any discussion on this item? All in favor? It is unanimous. Um, item number 3-2020, appointment of the finance committee. Um, any public comment on this agenda item? Seeing none. Um, during our, our caucus, we had a discussed a unanimous consensus that um, Councillor Garvin should be chairman. The council serves as a whole as the finance committee. Um, do I have a motion to nominate Councillor Garvin as chairman of the finance committee? So moved. Councillor Straw? Second. Councillor Jordan. Any discussion on this item? No? Nope. Yes. I just want to thank Chris for what I think was a really great job this past year. Um, a lot of attention to detail and a lot of time spent on a lot of important things related to the budget and the dashboards um, and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to acknowledge that and thank you for your efforts and I will do my best to live up to the standard that you've set, so. Thank you, Chris. Um, all right, all in favor? It is unanimous. Item number 4-2020, appointment of the Ordinance Committee. Any public comment on this item? No, seeing none. Um, the, the council determined that uh, Councillor Penelope Jordan should be chairman um, with Councillors Jamie Garvin and Christopher Straw serving as members. Um, do I have a motion to nominate Councillor Jordan as chairman, Councillor Jamie Garvin, um, and Christopher Straw as members of the Ordinance Committee. So moved. Councilor Gabrielson, a second. Second. Councilor Jordan, any discussion on this item? No, all in favor? 
All right, item 5-2020, appointment of an appointments committee. Any public comment on this item? Um, the council determined that uh, Councillor Devereaux would be an appropriate chairperson for the appointments committee and Councillors Jeremy, Jeremy Gabrielson and Caitlin Jordan as members. Do I have a motion for this item? So moved. Councillor Garvin, a second? Second. Councillor Jordan, um, any discussion on this item? All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, and we'll be taking up the next items um, unless there's any objection from the council to, to pull an item out as a consent agenda. So items um, six through 17 will be considered on block and we will entertain a single motion to approve those items. Um, is there any uh, public comment on items six through 17 on the agenda? Seeing none. Do I have a, a motion to approve items 6-2020 through 17-2020? So move. Councillor Jordan, Councillor Devereaux, second. Any discussion on these items? All in favor? It is unanimous. Item 18-2020, the Code of Ethics. Um, any public comment on this item? The town council rules provide that each council member will annually sign an attestation that they have read and understand the Code of Ethics for the town council. Um, I believe we will have that at the end of the evening, or? It's up to you, it's ready whenever you like. We can pass it around at the end for efficiency. Um, is any action needed as a council on that, or do we just sign? I think the motion would be to, to adopt the Code of Ethics as, ah, as, yes. as written. Do I have a motion to adopt the Code of Ethics as written? Councillor Garvin, second. Councillor Jordan, any discussion on the Code of Ethics? All in favor? Item number 19-2020, schedule of council meetings for 2020. Um, any public comment on this item? Okay, so we are looking for a motion to approve the regular special and workshop meeting dates for the council year 2020 as laid out in the agenda this evening. That also includes a budget review schedule. Um, do I have a motion? To move. Councillor Jordan, second. Second. Councillor uh, Caitlin Jordan, any discussion on this item? All in favor? Unanimous. Item number 20 2020, appointments to boards and committees. Any public comment on this item? Um, thank you for, to the appointments committee for all of their hard work. Um, do I have, yes. Um, I just wanted to point out um, for the purpose of disclosure, there are probably about five or six people on here that I uh, am friends with, have good personal relationships with. I just wanted to put that out there in no way. Um, I wasn't involved in the appointment selection process, but my vote tonight is by no way influenced by those relationships. So. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any comment? Okay. Um, so, looking for a motion to approve the appointments. Um, I'm assuming we don't need to go through those individually. <laughs> the appointments to the boards and committees um, with new terms beginning January 1, 2020, as laid out in the agenda. Councillor Devereaux, a second. Councilor Gabrielson, uh, any discussion on this item? All in favor? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say um, thank you to um, all of these individuals who are volunteering their time on um, various committees. I think these committees are 
an important part of our town. And Councillor Devereaux, did you have something to add as the chair of the committee? Yeah, I just wanted to add that we still have some vacancies, two on the conservation committee and one on our recycling committee. So if anyone is interested, we'd love to have you um, be a part of it. And will we be running another? Um, we will be uh, re-advertising probably the beginning of the year after the holidays. Um, we will uh, contact the appointments committee to set that schedule and new deadline. It will be posted on the town's website and at that time. Then the online application will become available. So everyone can look forward to it in January. Yes. Yeah, early okay. January. Early January. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the ta Town Center Tax Increment Financing District, otherwise known as TIF District. Um, is there any, uh, oh, open, I shall now open the public hearing on this item. Um, comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Um, does anyone have a comment on the Town Center TIF District? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Um, item 21-2020 is again the, the Town Center TIF District. On November 13th, um, 2019, at our previous meeting, um, Town <coughs> Assessor Clint Sweat presented an overview of some technical revisions. Um, we held a public hearing this evening. There was no comment. I'm now looking for a motion to approve the recommended technical revisions to the Town Center Infrastructure Improvement Tax Increment Financing District as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Councillor Straw. <laughs> Second. Second. Councillor Penelope Jordan. Uh, any discussion on this item? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 22-2020, the Property Tax <coughs> Assistant Program Report. Um, before you jump up there, is there any public comment on this item? No. Um, we will now receive a report from Clint Sweat on the Property Tax Assistance Ordinance. Great. Thank you, uh, Chairman and, and Council. Um, yeah, this is the, the second year of the Senior Tax Relief Program. And uh, I want to say it's 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 got great legs and it's it's going really well. Um, last year we had 132 applicants, and this year we've got 169 applicants. So it's had a 22% increase over last year. So the the word of mouth is is getting out there, and, and people are applying for the program. Um, and it's it's interesting you you. You hear a lot of people who come in who are applying for this benefit, and a lot of them are saying, you know, this is going to fill my heating oil tank this winter. This is going to help me with my prescription costs. Uh, you know, it's so it really is going to the the right targeted people, and I'm really proud of that. Um, as far as the uh, as far as the the funds are uh, this year over last. Um, this year we've uh, dispersed uh, almost eighty thousand dollars, seventy-nine thousand seven seventy-four. Uh, we did have uh, ten thousand dollars that we rolled in from last fiscal year. So all all told, I uh, I probably recommend that we bump that budget item up a little bit for uh, for next year. Um, we had 75,000 this year, maybe 85. I don't know. We'll talk to, to Matt and see what we can do about the budget. But uh, but yeah, all in all, it's a it's a great program, and uh, I want to thank my, you know, the staff in the office for helping, uh, getting the people in and getting them out and getting the the applications processed. Um, and right now the uh, the checks are in the in the process of being printed, and we'll distribute them uh, sometime in January. Are there, are there any questions? Yes. Um, one of the things I was wondering, is there a way to project growth? Meaning, because we saw, you know, what is it, 
20% or whatever growth. Is there a way to project what the next wave might be in order that we can ensure that we have uh, addressed it during our budget season? I don't know. Um, you know, we can, we can do a look back and then project ahead. That's probably about the best we can do. Um, I, I would expect that next year uh, we'll have more than 169 applications. It's gonna, mm -hmm. it'll trend up until we, we get to the plateau. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what that number is, so. Okay. Do you think that people um, understand that, it, I mean, uh, not everybody qualifies at the $500 level, correct? Correct. Do so you uh, think I, people understand the gradation that they too could have an opportunity even if it isn't at the $500 level? Um, I really didn't get into that with with the people because we, we you mm -hmm. know, if we crossed over the, the budget threshold, mm -hmm. then yeah, everybody's $500 check would end up being Four hundred and you know, right, ninety-seven right. dollars, exactly. or, or whatever. And at that point, I would just send a uh, a letter to that effect with the check to explain I see. why okay. it's not five hundred dollars. But, okay. uh, but so far, we, we've you know we've got five dollars that we're rolling into the next fiscal year. So we do have a little bit of money left. Did anybody comment about whether, and I, I understand that they, they, people had said about this will fill my oil tank and help with prescriptions, et cetera. Um, did any of them have comment about um, tax? Did you discuss tax pressure? Did you hear any? other oh, yeah. input that said, you know, this $500 is great, and not that I'm saying they're asking for more money, I just right. wanna know what the, the pressure is out there, because you must hear it. Well, obviously it's, you know, taxes are always a concern, and um, in this class of, of applicants are, are all on fixed income, so mm -hmm. their income's not increasing, but every year the tax bill ticks up two to three percent, so do, that's. Do you think that we should consider that as taxes increase, we address the threshold? Uh, that's, that's up okay. to the council to decide. <laughs> I, I don't know. We might want, and we might want to think about that because yep. to keep flat 500, and yes, it's making a difference. And 500 dollars is is a good amount of money, but if the pressure is increase in taxes, and um, then maybe we, we need to think about a way to address that with the increase. Uh, Councillor Shaw. Yeah. Uh, so I just really wanted to highlight uh, the change in the average income profile of the applicants. Yes. It, uh, it was almost a 25% drop, and to be able to have that large of a drop at that level is just, um, that's, that's a big drop. It all also indicates, it could either be that we lost a couple applicants who were just at the threshold, or previously we had a number at the threshold who were applying, and then suddenly the people at, that were down lower realized this was out there and mm -hmm. really applied. So from a policy perspective, that was amazing to see uh, that much of a shift. Uh, the one question I really had was the average valuation, uh, looking at all the averages, everything's going the direction that from a policy perspective would be what we'd be looking for. I was curious uh, for the total valuations, did we have any outliers, like were people with uh, valuations over like 750,000 were otherwise qualifying because of the income restrictions? Do you recall any really high hmm. uh, applicants? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't recall any that are way out there. Right. Um, of course, it has to be, um, the taxes have to be more than 5% of their, of their income to qualify, and their annual income has to be less than 60,000, so that kind of filters out uh, a lot of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't recall. Great, right. thanks. I, I do have a spreadsheet I can 
I, I was uh, just just wanted to make sure we dotted our I's and crossed our T's. Yep. We don't have people who have structured their finances to qualify for, obviously there's only 500 at this point, but. Now um, we, we did have to, last year I believe we only denied, I wanna say two applications, and this year I've had to deny, you know, I believe the number was eight, so. Right. You know, and those are just people that, for various reasons, either they, they haven't been in their home 10 years or their, um, annual income is just a tick over 60k uh, or they didn't have a homestead exemption I mean there was there was always something uh, but it, it was it was eight was the, the number I had to deny and I sent them letters and you know so thank you sure any other questions um, I have just a quick question sure. is there anything from your perspective about the ordinance that is not working smoothly or needs to be addressed? No, I think the ordinance is good. Um, the problem that we're seeing, and this is the second year of this, is on the administrative end. You know, I, I, we've got to make the forms easier to follow and easier to fill out. And, you know, that's just part of the, the learning curve year after year. So hopefully next year there's Forms will be a little easier for people to fill out, and uh, you know, make make the process smooth. But that's that's what we do every year. We improve on the product, and, uh, and I'm real real happy with it. So, um, Councilor Jordan, was were you making a request that that this be reviewed by the ordinance committee? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Um, if there are no other questions for Mr. Sweat, I'd like to thank you for your time Great. and thank for putting much. in all of this work um, to help out with people's very tight budgets. Great. Thank you all for helping too. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I am now looking for a motion to acknowledge receipt of the report from the tax assessor relating to the 2019 property tax assistance program as required by chapter 27 property tax assistance ordinance section nine annual report to the town council. Do I have a motion? Councilor Garvin. Second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan. Uh, any discussion on this item? And I would just note that if anyone from the public would like to look at the report, it is in the materials for this evening. Um, all right, uh, all in favor? It is unanimous. <laughs> Item number 23-2020, Ocean House Common. A number of documents have been drafted, three to be precise, between the town of Cape Elizabeth and Dr. David Jacobson for the Ocean House Common development at 326 Ocean House Road. And Matt is going to tee this up for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, this evening we have uh, John Mitchell of Mitchell and Associates here uh, to follow up on an item that was previously discussed with the council at a workshop. Uh, I think it was a few months back. Uh, what we we're looking at is uh, three different documents that are going to be uh, useful to the development next door. As you may have noticed, there have been a few changes uh, over the past week uh, to the positive with the, the beginning stages of the development of 326 Ocean House Road by Dr. David Jacobson. So as you may remember from that discussion, there was uh, three items that they were looking to come back to the council to get formal action on. One was on a, par a parking license agreement, which is going to allow uh, some uh, the use of 10 different parking spaces here on the town hall parking lot, uh, also across access easement, so uh, there's, you may see that the shape of the new road is starting to take shape coming from uh, Ocean House Road onto the property here, about midway up the lot. Uh, to get, uh, to gain that access though, we'll need an, uh, an access easement uh, to be granted to them. And then finally a drainage easement that they'll be granting to uh, us to allow us to go in and help maintain the drainage system that's there. Uh, Mr. Mitchell is here this evening and he'll be able to provide a, a greater level of detail than I may have provided here. And he's also brought along some, some friendly uh, displays as well. So uh, hopefully that'll be helpful to the council. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Mitchell. Uh, quick question. Mitchell, before, Mitchell. before you begin, Sorry. Mr. Mitchell, yeah. just a quick question from Councillor Garvin. Um, did the actual agreements, the three agreements, get uploaded to the um, packet? No, I, I, I have them. Uh, oh, okay. They were all reviewed by, uh, that, that's an important point, I forgot to lay out. Okay. Uh, everything's been reviewed by uh, Mike Hill from Monaghan Leahy uh, to bring that forward. Um, okay, I just didn't know if we were missing them. Thanks. No. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, go ahead, Mr. Thank Mitchell. You. Uh, John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, representing uh, David Jacobson. Uh, so, it, yes, as the town manager indicated, there are three uh, documents that we're requesting approval from the town council uh, for Ocean House Common. Uh, the first, as Matt outlined, is a parking agreement uh, which will allow Ocean House Common to use up to or share um, up to and not in more, any more than 10 parking spaces located in the rear of the town hall parking lot. Uh, the second one is a cross access easement. Um, as you can see on the master plan, the rendered plan on the right, um, our main access road uh, comes in from Ocean House Road, which is at the bottom of the sheet and loops through the development. We have parking on either side and connects to the uh, town hall parking lot uh, towards the rear of the parking lot. Um, in order to do this, we need a cross access easement which, which will allow vehicular and pedestrian access to and from uh, the development to the town hall lot. And then the final document is a drainage easement um, as part of our um, stormwater management plan for Ocean House Common, we have created uh, two infiltration basins along the common boundary of the town hall lot in the development, and which will uh, accommodate all of the runoff coming from the town hall parking lot, um, which sheets onto the Ocean House Common property. Uh, these infiltration basins will, uh, will capture the water, it will infiltrate down through these basins for water quality before being discharged into our stormwater management, our stormwater system. Um, so the uh, drainage easement will allow the town to, uh, the public works department, uh, to enter onto our property to uh, provide adequate maintenance. Um, those are the three uh, documents, and uh, to my knowledge, uh, the three have been um, reviewed by the town attorney. Uh, we've addressed their comments, his comments, and um, so we're just uh, waiting for the town council to approve it before um, adopting these uh, legal documents. So, go ahead and answer any questions. Uh, any questions for Mr. Mitchell? No. Um, I realize, uh, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. I, I forgot to allow an opportunity for public comment prior to Mr. Mitchell's presentation. Is there any public comment on this item before we move on? Seeing none, um, we are looking for a motion um, to authorize the town manager to grant a parking license agreement a cross access easement and a drainage easement with Dr. David Jacobson for Ocean House Common as reviewed by and deeded acceptable by the town attorney. Do I have a motion? Not a motion, but I did want to point out, as Jamie indicated, we haven't seen the documents yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they may be totally fine, but we haven't seen them. So I guess I, 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 pers uh, I, I won't be making a motion. Uh, just because I haven't seen the documents yet, so, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I was concerned about okay. the same thing. Um, do we perhaps have a motion to um, to postpone a vote definitely on this item? If I may, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Council will be having a workshop on Wednesday evening. If you'd like to, if we'd like to, I can get the documents and have them uploaded. If you want to put that on as a, table it to that evening. And then, and then take action at, at that time, if, if that would work for the council. Uh, any, any comment on that, uh, Council Garvin? 
Um, I, I, administratively, I'm fine with moving forward tonight. I, I mean, I would like to see them, but I, I think the, the spirit of um, what's been agreed to has been clearly articulated. Um, there's no financial ramification on any of these three agreements. Um, and, unless there's something that's in, in any way unusual to any other agreement that we typically make in these kinds of circumstances, then I, I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward um, for, for the administrative purposes and for the fact that um, the developer and their representatives are here tonight and I imagine are waiting on our decision to move forward with action that they need to be taking um, on their project. But it would be uh, just as a matter of housekeeping good to see those, I guess, retroactively. But if, if yeah. I may as well, Madam Chair, uh, I was advised that this has been the the, the process of how this had been done in the past. And if, if that was an error, then yeah. it's my first time around looking at that. But uh, generally, what uh, you know, talking with Maureen about this going forward, she said, you know, generally what they had done was brought the big picture forward uh, and have, making sure that the town's attorney had reviewed them, you know, consistently and got all the way, get all the way through. But uh, one way or the other, I can provide it. I'm happy to. I don't have a, a hesitation at all to do it. Um, it is fairly straightforward. It's mostly meets and bounds as well as, uh, uh, as well as what Mr. Mitchell had identified as well. Um, just in the interest of doing our, our due diligence, I agree that we should look at the items before voting on it, but um, I will entertain a motion if there is one to approve or to authorize the manager to go forward and review the documents on Wednesday if there is one. And if the council doesn't want to take that road, I would recommend that we review this on Wednesday. But is there a motion to move forward this evening? I, I move that we uh, authorize the manager uh, on the three agreements tonight. Is there a second? Second. Councillor Caitlin Jordan. Um, any discussion before we move forward? Yes, Councillor Jordan. Just to clarify what the motion was that we're going to approve that he enter into the agreements that the town attorney has reviewed and approved. I just wanna make sure the language is in there that that's what we're that was saying. My, yes, that was as, as yes. Yep. the agenda. Yep. Okay. Um, any other discussion on this item? Yes, Councillor. So again, uh, I, I'm almost certain that everything will be fine, but um, I guess I'm gun shy. It doesn't in any way relate to the parties here, but just with what happened with the other lot abutting the town hall um, and the fact that there's still no construction going on 12 years later. For that reason, I'm, I'm gun shy. I want to lay my eyes on it. So for that reason, I'm going to vote no. Councillor Devereaux. Uh, I'm in agreement with um, Councillor Straw. I want to be able to see the, um, the agreement before I vote. So if we're moving forward on a vote, I'm going to vote no. Uh, any other discussion, uh, Councillor Garvin? Um, I, I appreciate both points of view. I, I just happen to disagree. I, we're not talking about the sale of the property or anything like that. We're, um, e these are, um, you know, provisional uses, of, you know, based on easements and um, it it would have been more ideal to have have all the information, but uh, th there's nothing that concerns me about it, and I'm, I'm happy to move forward tonight. If there's no further discussion, um, all in favor of authorizing the manager to move forward? Four, all opposed? Three, the motion passes. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will get everything emailed to council first thing in the morning, just at least so you can, so you can have it. And I apologize for, uh, if, for a misstep. Uh, if, if um, I'm more than happy to blast it out there, we'll get it out to everybody and we'll get it posted. So thank you. I'm happy Appreciate to do that, that as well. So I apologize again for the heartburn on that. Don't worry about it, clearly. Yep, disagreed <laughs> on it. <laughs> uh, moving on to item 24. Thank you. Thank you. Item 24-2020, there is a request for acceptance of Aster Lane and open space by Cottage Brook LLC and Maxwell Woods LLC. Um, looking for a motion, oh, sorry, before we move forward. Um, sorry, would you like to tee this item up, Matt? 
<laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to, Madam Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, you'll notice in your packet, uh, you have a pretty substantial package that has been received from, uh, from uh, Owens McCullough from Sebago Technics, and this identifies a couple of different items that we have this evening. Uh, one is a smaller portion of Astor Lane, which goes back to the uh, in initial development of, of Cottage Brook uh, that has been completed, has been inspected, uh, the public works director, uh, is comfortable with us accepting that, and so the motion on, on that would be to accept that in its entirety as to the formal acceptance process. Uh, then you have an additional two segments, uh, two other items that are there. One is, uh, or, or the, these are both the conditional acceptance of what is the, from the end of the little portion of Astor Lane that is for full acceptance from that point all the way forward through the uh, Maxwell Woods development that is, uh, is under construction. Uh, looking to have a conditional acceptance of that, plus as well as the open space that is uh, to be received by the town uh, once these conditions have all been met. Uh, so uh, speaking with public works director as well as the town planner, uh, they find these conditions are, are acceptable and had made the recommendation to, the, to come to the council and bring it forward this evening. Uh, the road surface is there. Uh, one of Bob's uh, thoughts as far as doing the conditional acceptance now on the road specifically before uh, the final code of paving is put on there is uh, to be honest, there's gonna be a lot of construction uh, and to do the finished paving uh, and then have all the heavy trucks go over, he felt that it'd be, we'd be better served by having the base down and then the final Later, put on when all the work, the heavier work, has been has been completed. So that's why we this has been brought forward this evening. Thank you. Before we move forward with the motion, is there anyone from the public who'd like to comment? Yes. Um, we we do typically limit to three minutes per person. And if you could just identify your name and address, please. <coughs> Madam Chair, uh, members of the council, my name is Paul McKinney. I live at 11 Headland Lane in Cape Elizabeth. And I'm the president of the Cottage Brook Homeowners Association. So I represent <coughs> the 19 households in that uh, subdivision. And I, I'm going to encourage you to accept the portion that's complete of Astro Lane and conditionally accept the rest of it. Primarily because it's a real safety hazard we, we have in existence right now. <coughs> whereby uh, we have to currently drive um, out through the very um, crowded neighborhood adjacent to our neighborhood. A lot of little children play out there and with the snow coming and the snow banks already starting to pile up, it's become quite a, an unsafe situation. So just from a public safety point of view, I think this would be a very good move. Additionally, I'd like to you to consider in, in the future of uh, eliminating that gate that um, separates us from the Columbus neighborhood. When I was on the council years ago, that came in, it was a, it was a big uproar, it was a NIMBY issue, and um, once Astor Lane is open, I think that neighborhood could also benefit, and it, it would just make things a lot safer for public safety. So that's, that's uh, my input, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Mine will be about 30 seconds. Uh, I'm Owens McCullough who put the memo together for the town manager, Joel Fitzpatrick, developers here. And we're here to, if you had any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Other than that, I'll go sit down again. <laughs> Thank any, you. Any questions? Go for it. Uh, so I don't know if this would be for you or the town manager. In looking at the highlighted blue sections of the two maps, they don't meet. Um, is that intended? Is it an oversight? Um, the descriptions do meet. Um, I was the one to put together the color graphic between the two plans, so that's just me who Oops. didn't connect the dots. <laughs> got it, got it. But they do meet. <laughs> got it. That's okay, that's um, I was just curious, so um, with a condi uh, conditional acceptance tonight, this will become a town way, and so the town will become responsible for winter maintenance of the conditionally accepted road? Yes. Um, are there any 
concerns uh, either from the town side or the developer side around mid winter maintenance, particularly with not having the manholes set right or you know, set at their finished right. elevation and or with ongoing construction? So the uh, sewer manholes are below the okay. uh, uh, base paving grade and Bob Malley and I and Joel, we had the contractor set catch basins down to uh, the pavement grade that's there now for that exact reason. It becomes problematic for plows up over them, but they were all lowered down to that. So uh, when we come back in the spring to put surface paving, those will all be brought up to grade. So yes, we <laughs> that's always a challenge. So we tried to make it as simple as possible. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Councilor Shaw. Uh, so that uh, the section within the Astor Lane Cottage Brook, I guess the Cottage Brook uh, subdivision, that part's totally done. All that is totally right. done. And it's right. just the other one that. Yeah, so cottage, the section within Cottage Brook is finished, paved, 100% done. Then the section in Maxwell Woods um, is base paved. Okay. If there are no other questions, um, and no other public comment. Don't see anyone jumping up. I'm looking for a motion to accept the fully constructed small section of Astor Lane and conditionally accept the larger section of Astor Lane and open spaces A, B, and the agricultural open space subject to the conditions laid out in the agenda and authorize the town manager to sign deeds associated with this order, which have been reviewed by and deeded acceptable by the town attorney. Do I have a motion? So moved. Councilor Gabrielson. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan. Any discussion on this item? Councilor Straw? Uh, kind of similar to the last item. It's, um, we, we, have, we don't have the actual documents. And the one deed we do have uh, just mentions as seen in Exhibit A, it wasn't clear to me what Exhibit A was. Um, uh, that said, uh, I'm totally fine with the, presumably, so long as every, everything's presented to us, with the Cottage Brook portion of Astor Lane, I would be hesitant to accept the portion that isn't yet completed for the reasons uh, Councillor Gabrielson noted, basically. what. What, uh, what risks or issues are we creating by accepting this section that isn't necessarily done yet, where it isn't done paving? I'd, I'd just wait until the end of the, the season, once the work's done, then accept it at that point. Any, um, did you have a, a response to that, Matt? If I may, I know uh, uh, we're in somewhat odd uh, waters, but uh, I know speaking with Bob about it, and uh, he's comfortable doing it this way. He thinks this is probably the best as he had said, probably the best approach because we're going to will eventually, quote unquote, own the street. Uh, and he felt that, you know, the heavy traffic that will go over it as far as heavier construction construction rigs that that might, uh, if we insisted upon getting the final code in there, may be damaged more. So instead, when the finished paving is done, we'll basically have a pristine uh, street that that'll be ready to go, and we'll should get a, a longer life from that afterwards. And that's kind of why uh, we're looking at the conditional, accept and it's also conditional uh, as well. So if there is something that may take place over the course of the winter, it can be corrected before final paving is put down as well. So we're kind of looking at, trying to look at it from the best best approach. Uh, Councilor Devereaux. I understand that it's conditional and I would vote for it for that reason. And I think that um, with Bob Malley looking at it and looking at the road and, taking into consideration um, plowing and what, what you talked about. Uh, it seems to me like everything's been covered. My concern is if it is conditional, how, um, uh, when, when each of these items are met, what if they aren't met? Is there a timeline? Is there anything in there that it has to be done by a certain date or completed? Can I yes, please do. There's a bond and money held by the town so that if Joel didn't do it, the town would have the funds to do it. Um, so there is a, a bond that is held to cover the cost of all those items. And that includes if we come back in the spring and there was something that was damaged in the road, that's what the bond is for. And it would be repaired before they surface paved on it. 
Okay, thank you. Sir. Uh, Councilor Schott. So I think that might then address my concern then. So to the extent that between now and when uh, springtime uh, frost heaves kick in, the road's torn up and it turns out that a bunch of more work needs to be done to get the road up to standards. Um, my concern is, oh, does it end up being on us or on you to make that happen? You're saying that there's a bond out there that we can basically say, guys, do it, and if you don't do it, we pull it from the bond to pay for the cost of bringing it up to standards. So if it was a defect in the road construction, that's covered under the bond. If somebody drove through there and, I don't know, jumped over the curb and ran into the wall over the edge, that's, that's not the developer's fault. But if there was a defect in the construction, yes. The other one is just, normal risks of road. So I think you road. shifted me back the other way. So, <laughs> so my concern is if, if the road's not done and we have these heavy construction vehicles going across, I guess I don't know enough about roads, but it seems like that's just gonna tear the thing up to some extent. So I'd rather have you guys totally on the hook till it's actually done so rather the, than us being on the hook at all. So the road, let me, let me go back to that. So yeah. um, as construction vehicles come back and forth over the road, it is very common not to put the surface paving down while that's happening because more uh, times than not, it's not that the road fails because of that, it's that the surface pavement, which is a thinner course of pavement, might get cracked or marred up during that, that movement of the construction. So we hold on that so when it comes in the spring and that heavy lifting work is done and we pave it then, the town gets a fresh brand new uh, surface on the road so that it's 100% at that point. So it's not uncommon, it happens in a lot of communities that they'll wait till the construction's done or they'll put the base paving down and wait a year before they put the surface paving down. <laughs> it's pretty common to, to, to do that. Got it. Um, any other discussion? Uh, I believe we have a motion on the table. Um, all in favor of the motion? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Moving on to item 25-2020. Request for memorial and event at Fort Williams Park commemorating the USS Eagle 56. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to speak to this item? Seeing no one. Um, I will just tee this up. <laughs> During World War II, on April 23, 1945, the USS Eagle 56 was sunk by a German submarine about five miles off the coast of Cape Elizabeth. 49 sailors were killed in action, 13 survived. A memorial is currently located at Fort Williams Park to the right of the lighthouse when facing the water between the two binoculars. On November 21, 2019, Steve Lyons, Cape Elizabeth and, of Cape Elizabeth, and Paul Lawton, Naval Historian, presented a request to the Fort Williams Park Committee to replace the USS Eagle 56 Memorial with a new granite monument at the same location. The proposed monument will list the names of the sailors on board, noting those who were killed in action. Family members will cover the cost. In addition, they requested approval for a 75th anniversary commemoration at the memorial on Saturday, May 2nd, 2020, from noon to 1 p.m. The Fort Williams Park Committee approved the recommendations five to zero. Um, at this time, we are looking for a motion to approve the recommendation of the Fort Williams Park Committee to replace the memorial at Fort Williams Park commemorating the USS Eagle 56 with a granite monument listing the names of the soldiers on board and to approve a 75th anniversary remembrance on Saturday, May 2nd, 2020 from noon to 1 p.m. at the memorial as presented. That monument is to be paid for by family members. Do I have a motion? I have so moved. Councillor Devereaux, is there a second? Councillor Garvin, any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? And it's unanimous. Um, finally, item 26, 2020, acceptance of annual gifts and donations. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak to this item? Um, so I'm looking for a motion um, from the Cape Elizabeth Town Council to accept the gifts and donations received in 2019 with appreciation. And I would note that there is a list of these items in the materials for the evening. 
Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. So moved. Councilor Devereaux. <coughs> Any discussion on this item? All in favor? It is unanimous. Okay. I will now open the floor to any citizens who wish to raise an item not on the agenda for the evening. Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor Gabrielson? Sorry, second? Councilor Straw? All in favor? It's unanimous. And I would just ask everyone to remember to stick around and sign the code of ethics before you go, please.